Okay, you guys. Here's all my new purchases. So I, because I inventory all my tools and embellishment that I don't consider consumables, even though they are, I save up dealing with it until I get a bunch of stuff, and that's kind of where I'm at. So what I need to do is I'm going to walk, well, what I'm going to do is, sh is share with you how I deal with this, and then I'll walk you through my inventory process. Hopefully I can figure out how to do a screen capture on my computer and show you exactly what's what. So the very first thing that we are going to do is sort through what gets inventory and what doesn't get inventory. So everything, I'm going to give myself some room here. So everything that gets inventory, we're going to put in this basket. Okay. So basically I am looking for things that I do not consider consumables. And these are all consumables, right? Now this would not be considered a consumable, so put that there. We talked about that before. All of this stuff I buy on sale. I um, I very rarely buy anything full price anymore. I try not to, I'm, but I do look out for some good deals. So this is all considered stuff that I can just file away, which is good. Okay, so this is all the stuff that needs to be inventoried, and I've got a great big bin of stuff I can file away. I'm going to do that first, and then I'll come back and tell you next what I do for inventory. Okay, so now that I did that preliminary sort of stuff that I'm going to inventory, I'm going to sort it yet again between stuff that needs a sample versus repackaging. So I repackage all my dies and all my stamps. Um, I just don't like packaging. I know. The only ones that I don't actually repackage will be these types of stamps because I'm, I'm going to use them as decorative items. So they'll just be placed on a shelf somewhere, but I do still inventory them. Um, these don't get repackaged either. They just go in my mixed media drawer. I will do samples of the pens. Um, this will not get repackaged. It's just going to be inventoried. So, you kind of get the idea. You guys are going to think I'm crazy by the time I finish showing you everything I do. Honest, there's a method to my madness, really. I'm not sure if I know what it is, but I feel like there is. Um, I have three binders that I manually keep track of everything independent of what I put in the computer. Um, for now, the reason why I do it this way is the stuff that I keep in the computer, I store in Adobe Elements, and I'm not sure if there's an easy way to get a listing out of Adobe Elements of all your files in there. I haven't figured that out yet. So what I like to do is have this so that if I do go to a sale or um, you know leave my craft space, I have um, everything at least documented by vendor. At some point, I would love to get rid of this, but I'm just not quite there yet. So I have a binder for ink and embossing glitters, etc. I also have another one for um, punches, stencils, stamps, etc. And then this one is for, I think, other coloring mediums. Yeah, other coloring and other tools. So all I will do now is I will take everything here that I want to inventory and I will write it down in this book. So let's take let's take something really easy. So this is um, just a die set. It's Sizzix and it is called where is it? What is it called? Shadow Script Number One. So I will just go to my die section. I don't know if you can see this. Let me see if I can zoom you in. <clears throat> so the die section, I just have it as a running list. So I will go to where Sizzix is. And I will just add it to the list. And every now and then I will go in and update this. It's just an Excel file. And then I'll reprint them. So I'm getting to the point where I need to start a new, a new sheet. Um, so this is under Sizzix. 
what do they call it again? Shadow script number one. When this does get indexed, I have a numbering system on this, I will come back and update it there. Now, in theory, you could do this all in one shot. Yeah, I could like label and everything and then come back, but I find it easier this way because I don't always keep track of the manufacturer on the packaging, if that makes sense. So that's what I'll do there, and then and I just continue like this all the way through. Um, all the way through to the end. What I do want to show you actually is if I have a coordinating set. So this is um, Dilutions Holiday Stamp and Stencil. It's called Dear Santa. So I will go to um, Ranger. I think I have, do I have Ranger in here? Yeah, there it is. Ranger, this is Dilutions. And this is Dear Santa. And this one, I have a category for it, so I will call this one Christmas. And again, it's whatever categories make sense for you. And then I have a coordinate. And what I'll put here is a stencil so that I know to go and look for this. Then I'll go back to the stencils, stencils, embossing folders, etc. I will find Ranger and Dear Santa. And I will put here uh, stamp set. And this is a stencil. And that's all I do for this stage. So I'm going to finish doing this and then I'll come back and I'll show you the next thing that I'm going to do. Okay, so for this next part, we're going to go over to my computer and we are going to go and find images of all the items that I want to inventory. So I just open a new tab in Internet Explorer, I go up to the search bar and the very first thing I want to look up is the Sizzix, uh, what, do, what we call Sizzix Shadow Script number one. So what I'll do is I'll just type that in, just like so, and I'll hit search and then I'll click on images and all of them will show up, well, a bunch of images will show up and it's up to you to choose which one that you want. Um, a lot of these are very similar, so it's not that big of a deal. All I like as to what you pick, but normally I would pick the one that looks the best to me. So I'm just going to go to the very first one and I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go save picture as. And this is going to open up automatically for me in the directory that I save all my inventory items. And then what I do is I take the name of the product, show shadow script one, and then I put the name of, or the brand name behind that. And I make sure this is a JPEG or a PNG and I hit save. And then I do the next one, which was the <clears throat> Ranger, Ranger Dilutions Dear Santa Stamp and stencil. So whatever I think will be the trigger for this to come through. Ranger, Dilutions, Dear Santa, Stamp and Stencil. Here's the stamp set. Here's the stencil. And see how these two images are the same? I happen to like this one a little better because it's bigger. So I'm going to save that one. So I'll go to save picture as. And I'm going to go Dear Santa. If I could type. And I'm going to put stamp here just so that I differentiate between the two. And I'm going to put Ranger Dilutions. And then here's the stencil. So we're going to save picture as Dear Santa Stencil Ranger Dilutions. And I just continue to go through this all the way through all the product that I have. Now, for um, my non-stamp type stuff, so um, more like embellishments, for instance, I had the Nouveau Silver Tinsel Pure Sheen Glitter. And basically, I do exactly the same thing. And when it pops up, I just have a quick scan through here. Now I have a smaller jar, I don't have the full jar. I have one of these. 
So you can make the determination whether to use this, even though it contains all four, or the one up here. And what I will do is I will just pick one and use that and just make a note that it's a small container. Uh, let me just see, what is this one? The other ones just say silver on, they don't say silver tinsel. Let's have a look, maybe there's some more information here, no, but that looks pretty close. So I'm gonna use this one. What I will do in this case, I'm going to go pure sheen glitter, silver tinsel, so the color, and I'll put small, because this is a small jar, and then I'll put Tonic Studios Nouveau. Save. And that's it. So I'll go through all my products and go and find images of everything. If I can't find an image online, I just take a photo of it and uh, save it in the same directory with the same naming convention. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is for those items that are embellishments or ink or whatever, you know, that kind of the consumables that I'm considering tools, I do do samples of everything and I store them in coin pockets similar to what Jennifer McGuire has done. Totally her idea, totally, you know, took it and ran with it. So I'm in Photoshop Elements and I have a sample page that I made up of these two by two squares. And all I'm going to do is go in and then create um, a square for each one of the items that I have that I want to do a sample of. And all I'm doing in this case, this is pretty small, so I'm going to hit Control Plus. And what I'm doing is putting the name, uh, the brand name on the top, and then the color or product on the bottom. Okay, so that's it for this stage. I'm going to continue doing this off camera, and I'll touch back in with you when I'm doing the next part. Okay, so now that I've made my sample squares I guess you want to call them for lack of a better word. I've printed them out. This is what they look like. If I feel it's more effective to trim these before I apply or do the sample I will do so. In this case I think I'm okay with just doing all of these right off the bat. The only one I think that would be one that would work better would be the mica mist. This one up here. And so um, I'm just going to leave that one for now, and I will do that one later. Um, but the rest of them I think I can do just off the bat, so or just with what I've got. So the very first one here is silver tinsel, and what I would do for something like that with glitter is I have these glue dots. They're really old, um, you guys. Like they're from, I bought them at Costco like nine years ago, I think. Um, but what I like about them is that they're a fair size. They're probably, I'm guessing, maybe a half inch. And um, they're perfect for doing samples. So I don't know what I'm going to do when this one runs out because it's the last tin I have. I suppose there's probably other glue dots out there um, that'll work. So all I do is I just apply that within where I think the square is going to be. Peel that off take the glitter and I'm really lazy when this part comes because you know I've done all this other work already um, so <laughs> I, I want to do the least amount of effort as I possibly can even though you guys all probably think this is ridiculous what I'm doing but um, it works for me so all I'm going to do in this case is I'm just going to tip it right over top of the glue dot and lock that up give that a good press And then I will take a small little Swiffer sheet and clean up the excess, just like that. Okay, for the Glimmer Paste, I will um, just do like a, what do you call it, like a swath of it, I guess? Is that the word? I think that's the word. Um, let me just pull out 
my knife. I do try to keep with these products, I don't know if it makes a difference or not, but I do try to keep as much of this foil on as possible. My my thought process behind it is perhaps it will prevent it from drying out. I don't know if that's true or not, but um, I do try and keep as much of that as possible. So all I'll just do here is I will just take a swath of it and then just apply it. Just like so. And I really, really am just trying to keep this as quick as possible because like I mentioned before, I'm already doing quite a bit of work, you know, just inventorying everything. So where I can save time is what I hope to do so. Okay. For the drops, I do a couple things. One, I do... Um, three drops on there and I also do a drop right on the jewel that way when it's in my container I can see what I've got and I'm just going to give that a clean okay and then I, before filing or before filing <laughs> before putting this away in the container I'll wait till that is dry as far as the markers go, I basically just do a scribble. So we're just going to depress this. Oh, there we go. That was quick. And then I'll just scribble something like that. And I'll call that good enough. Okay. So I'm just going to continue to do the rest. Um, a lot of these will take some time to dry. So I will put them on a shelf somewhere. Um, out of the way so that um, they can dry without me smearing or putting something down in and when that's done I'll show you how I trim them up and what I store them in okay so now I'm going to show you how I trim these up now if you see here in the corners and along each one of these items or each one of these two inch marks I put some cut line marks and I think technically you're supposed to like use your exacto knife and I've done that um, but it takes longer I think than what I'm gonna do here so the very first thing that I'm going to do is just and you can turn the light on if you have the cutter pillar pro to see where the lineup is okay. as I trim down one side then I trim down the other side So, so now I know from either side it's, it measures two inches, right? So it's nice and easy. So then I just use the um, marks on my cutter to cut two inches. Like so. Okay, and then this I'll put in my scrap bin and use it for something else and then two inches so I end up with two inch squares when I'm finished so now that I have my samples trimmed what we're gonna do is we're going to pull out my coin pockets and I just bought these on Amazon and I still need to do a little bit of work with them I have tabs that are not permanent. I'm just not ready for that yet. I haven't figured out. I haven't inventoried everything. Not inventory. I haven't sampled everything in my craft room yet. So until that's done, um, I just want to make sure I know what categories I have, etc. I used one of these key rings. At first I used a binder ring and it kept snapping un undone and then it would fall out all over the place, which I absolutely hated. And I have three of these right now. So this one here has watercolors, acrylic paints, pigment sticks, paint pens. So it's basically paint. This one here has things like embossing powder, um, not embossing powder, embossing mousse and pastels. That's all I have in this one right now. And then this one has um, embossing powders, dimensional embellishments like the Nouveau, mica flakes, glitter, glitter pen, etc. So 
so that's the one that we're going to use. Actually, I have a third one, a fourth one. The fourth one has all my ink swatches in it. So anyway, so I have four of these. So today I just have glitter, <coughs> glitter marker. So all I'm going to do is go over to my glitter pen section. And I try and do this somewhat in rainbow order. Um, ideally, I would have it going from light to dark, but let's be real, it's too much work. So when and if I, you know, finally have time to do so, I will worry about it. But in the meantime, I don't have the time, so I just slot them in wherever. And I'm okay with that. I don't mind doing an overall view in order to see where I'm at. Now, periodically, like for instance, I've used up all the purple, and I have another row, so that's fine, but if I happen to use up all the blue, I would take the time to move these down so that at least all the blues together, all the greens are together, etc. And do we have more than one blue? I don't think so, right? No. Okay. And depending on the type of pen or whatever, I've done different um, designs, and I'm, o I'm okay with that. Um, it doesn't have to be all exactly the same and all perfect. I'm not that particular. But if that's something that's important to you, then by all means, be consistent. I'll just slot those in. And we got black over here. And we got gray slash silver. We'll stick that in there. And that is it. That's all I do with my samples. So now, whatever samples I've finished with, as well as any stamps or other tools that I'm not going to repackage, I will take out of the packaging and I will find a place for them or a home in my craft room for now until I finish doing this reorg. Okay, so next I'm going to show you um, how I repackage my dies and stamps. So I have a bin. I'm not, it sort of works. I'm not exactly thrilled with it, but um, I don't have another option at this point. So we're just going to go with it. Um, basically what I store in here, this box can go, are all my tapes for my brother uh, label maker which also I typically will store in here and then I have all the different sizes of my envelopes that I keep and I really just use the same method that Jennifer McGuire has shared with everybody so I'm not doing anything special or fancy there I have the regular pockets let me see I have the larger size ones I can't remember what this is for this is for like what is this four four and a half no five and a half by eight and a half um, there's that size I have the regular standard Avery L type size I will um, oh sorry I've got six by six these ones were just things that I had found at the dollar store years ago I do keep these pockets because I do re bag the Sizzix ones I only use these if I absolutely have to um, and so then I recycle them for other things and then I also where are you use the CD pockets and I've gotten really lazy about putting paper in these <laughs> so normally I like to do what I've done over here is have the cardstock inside and then I just slide and I've gotten lazy with it and you know what that's okay when I have time I can always go back and add them but in the meantime it's functioning and working and that's all that matters and then I have some different magnet sheets here I also have some of these magnet pieces and I have used these they're pretty thick um, I did use the binder system what is it like the that goes with these it's like a binder in a box and I did use that for a while but it's just too clunky for me and uh, anyways I had a bunch of these magnetic sheets which I've kept and I will put longer dies and stuff on here and just not put them in an envelope. So that is that. I bought some of the larger um, cardstock for the 6x8 stamp sets that seem to be so popular now. Um, I must have forgot to buy envelopes. So when I was in Hobby Lobby, I thought 
I would see if these crystal bags would work. Um, they are 6x8. There's 25 bags for $4.49 and I used a 50% off coupon because I figured why not. Let's try. Um, <clears throat> the bags are ju just exactly the same size I think as this so if I wanted to in add these I would just need to trim them down a little bit like an eighth of an inch and then they would fit in the bags. So um, I have just bought these in a pinch. I think when and if I um, do need more bags I will buy the ones from either I think Simon says stamp carry them and maybe MFT I'm not sure about that so anyways that's that um, I try not to have too many different sizes but you know sometimes you got to make it work so that's what's in my box and then what I have here <laughs> I don't know I've gone on many iterations of this this seems to be working the best right now so I do have a numbering system, and I probably should have just done alphabetical, but I didn't. And my stuff is coded by category, and I've got numbers on it, etc. And this is just a way that I keep track of what's next. So I will show you how I use this here shortly. So the very first thing I do is I take all my stamps, etc. that I have dealt with. You know, I've already got images of these and I already have written them in the black book. So what I will do, let's just, okay, let's take the um, tailored expressions with embossing folder. I do not put embossing folders in an envelope. Literally, all I do is I take them out and if they do not have the name on it, I will put a label with the name. So as far as I'm concerned, the only thing this needs is a number. Let's see what else. we got another one here. Same deal. I will pull this out. Um, this one does not have a name on it. It just says close to my heart. So I will take my label maker and I will clear this off. And I like to um, use the chain print so that uh, I don't waste any, or waste as little labeling tape as possible. So this is just dot, and I'll hit print, and then I won't do anything with it. At this point, at the end, I'll come back and um, throw that, yeah, throw that in, uh, what am I trying to say? I'll come back, print it, and throw it on the thing. Okay, do I have any? No, I don't have any regular. Okay, so let's talk about these. So these are odd sizes. They're not six by six. They're bigger than bigger than that. So what I will do with these is I will keep them in their packaging, and all I will do is you see how there's the sticky side down here where they've got the it it attached. The logic tells you to undo this and pull it out. The problem is, is that the stuff keeps getting stuck on it every time you bring it in and out, which I don't like. So all I do is I just go to the top opposite of that and I just trim off the tiniest little bit so that now this will just slide in and out easily without having to worry about the, um, without worrying about it sticking. So I will come in here and I will go, I'm calling this one doilies, and this is by Momenta, Momenta, print, it goes in the pile. When it comes to stamps, so this is Dear Santa, so we're just going to come back down here, we're going to go Dear Santa, I do not put the name of the brand with stamp sets. I tend to remember those so to save on um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? To save on tape I don't bother. So now I just want to see what's what um, pocket this is going to fit in so the regular pocket will work. So I literally, did I print that? No I don't remember if I printed it or not. Okay. So I literally will just pull this out. I don't normally keep the packaging. I guess if I ever want to resale, resell these, that would be a problem, but I just don't worry about it. 
I figure I'm not going to get much money for them anyways in the long run, so I'll just do what I want to do. Okay. And then that goes in recycling. And then the stencil. I do like to put stencils in packaging, like in some sort of packaging, because I find that they get caught on all sorts of stuff. So I will pull this out, and it looks like it'll fit in the same pocket. And so I will slide that in there, just like so. And now on this one, I will do Dear Santa and then Return. I'll put Ranger Dilusions and print. So I will trim them out. If I think the packaging is useful for any reason, so for instance there's an image on the back showing it all colored, I will keep the packaging in that case. Most dies I find will fit in the CD cases, so I literally just pull that off. If I had cardstock in here, there would be cardstock, slide that in, and if there is an image that I want to keep, I will just trim this down to fit. And I don't care if it's pretty or not. I really don't. This is just for functional purposes that I'm storing this. And I just slide that in the back. So I think there would be a white sheet in between. The back would have the image and then there would be um, the die. So now let's assume I've gone through all of these. I will then feed my label through. Okay. And then what I do is I trim off the front and I only take, well actually I take all the stickers off. Like that. And then I usually do this on the edge of my table but you won't be able to see. So I'm just going to stick it down, down on my mat for now so you can see what I do. And I literally just come in here, trim, and stick. Okay, and then that goes back in my box. It's not ready to be filed yet. I know. One more step. Crazy, right? I am crazy. What can I say? But I think the end result works for me, and maybe uh, doing all of these steps doesn't work for you, but maybe some iteration of it could work. So that's why I'm sharing it with you. So I just go like that. And then when I get down towards the end, I kind of just do the finger thing. Okay. And to be honest, I will probably peel these off because that will drive me crazy. It's funny the things that drive you crazy, isn't it? This is the one where I had the false print. Stick that on the corner. And then this is the dot. There. Now I didn't put close to my heart on here because close to my heart is down here, so I don't didn't feel that that was necessary. Okay, so that will be that step. Then once that's all done, I'll show you what I do next. Okay, so what I would normally do now is I would sort these by size. Okay. And what I've tried to do is, for each size, I've driven, or driven, I've drawn the size of the envelope on here. So I know that this is, I'm considering this a small for this particular application. Now, all the Disney stuff I consider travel, in my mind, that makes sense to me. And this is a die, so almost all dies start with a Y. So I've got all my categories across the top, and what I'm going to do is look for YT. So this is YT Travel. I have two labels here. All I do is I just peel up the one that I need for this instance, trim it off, and apply it. If I ran out, so if I were to have used the last one, I would create at least two or three more to add on here with the label maker. Okay? It just works that way for me to track exactly what the next numbering sequence is. Okay? 
So these sizes here, that's I'm considering a large. So I just go through, find the large, okay? The first one is a stamp, <clears throat> and it's Christmas. That's how I'm looking at it. So that's our Christmas. So again, I just peel this up, cut that off. Come on. And affix the number. This is a stencil. Consider stencils um, like dies. And again, this would be Christmas. And I have different categories for dies and stencils for Christmas. I have Christmas Other, Christmas Snowflakes, and Christmas Words. Now there are Christmas words on here and that it says Merry Christmas, but it's primarily these, these trees. So I'm going to say that this is Christmas Other. And again, it's not... The reason why I break these into categories is because sometimes I just want to quickly filter through what I have. I don't want to have to go and pull up my inventory system and look through all the images. Sometimes I just want a really quick peek and my knowing that if I want Christmas words I can go to one section and all of them are there or I can go to Christmas other and everything's there. So that's the reasoning behind that. Okay so before we go to the computer I do have another example that I want to show you. It's this, one of these ones where it comes with dies and a stamp set. If I feel that the stamp set and the dies will, I will only ever use them together, then I put them in the same pocket and I will file them or store them with the stamps. If I feel that I would get more use out of them independently, I will split them up and store them separately, but on the stamp and on the die package, I would say C coordinating stamp or C coordinating die at and then put the location. So that way when I pull it from my stash, if I'm just pulling it for whatever reason, then I know that that exists. So um, all I would do is the exact same thing that I have been doing is just pull this out of the packaging. Now when there's a few dies like this, there's a number of dies, I will make use of magnetic sheets. And I buy these either at Ellen Hudson or Simon Says Stamp. I know some people have made use of vent covers. Um, and I think that's a great idea. If it works, why not? And it's less expensive, why not? I just have gone for convenience, that's all. So I will try and make these fit as well as possible um, on the... Um, what do you call it, on the magnet sheet. And there may be some overhang or drop off and that's okay. These are really sticky. As long as they hold when I pick up, that's all that I care about. Super sticky. And this is why I don't bother to keep stuff in the packaging. It just feels like it's too much effort to have to remove it, and I am so lazy that um, it's just not going to happen for me. So this will fit. I am a lazy crafter. At least that's what I tell everybody. This is my excuse, I guess. Okay. And then the stamp set. Okay. Just like that and then it gets a label just like all the other ones. Basically at this point I'm going to finish all of these up from what I just showed you and then I'll bring you back to the computer and show you what the last step is. Okay, So the final step in my very long inventory process, and I know it's long, oh, um, is to actually come into Photoshop Elements and um, actually match up the images that we stored earlier with the numbering that I assigned to the repackaged pro um, products, so stamps or dies or whatever. So once you're in Photoshop Elements, what I normally do is I go under Find and I search for items not in any album or untagged items, either or will work. And what comes up is are the images that we just pulled through, as you can see, some of them look familiar, like here's the Sizzix set, 
here's the dear Santa plus all the other ones that I did now there's a bunch of other stuff in here because well I'm just a little behind on um, on my inventory and that's okay it is what it is and I will get to it someday but at least I know that that's here so I will um, basically then click on one of these items okay and over here on the right hand side there's information and then there's a caption so in the caption I will put the numbering system that I assigned to the um, to the product so w dash l dash seven so that's the first step and then the next step is to add tags so I have a number of tags broken out by company themes calendar color and other so if I open up company you can see I've got a bunch of ones already established if I come down to themes I've got a number of different themes in here and you can always add more if you need to these are more along the lines of shapes or travel or postage or birthday sentiments etc and then calendar has to do with if the particular items falls within the calendar year so think like Christmas I would put under winter under Christmas color this is more so for uh, things like the sprays and the crystal drops that's what I use that one for so let's go back to this one here so this is definitely sentiment sentiments so if I were to scroll up under um, words letters and symbols I have sentiments and under sentiments I have a number of descriptions as well so I would say that this is descriptions because it's describing things um, encouragement could be because there's the word brave there right um, what else we got brave lucky create story so I think that's all that fits there now I do have a category up above called love so we'll add that and I also have something called scrapbooking because this would be something I would add to my scrapbooking as a caption if I double click on it it brings that image up you can see all the tags down here at the bottom you can see my numbering system so then at this point the last thing to do is assign it to an album and these are dies so this is going to go to the dies and cartridge files and that's basically all I do so that's the first example and now I'll do the next one so that you can see again what I'm doing so we're going to pull up the stamp set now this one here is by Ranger so I could go all the way up to company and tag it like I just showed you or I could come down here where it says image tags and I can type in Ranger and click here and then add I find this actually is quite a bit quicker than scrolling through the list because the list has gotten quite big so I've got Christmas as well right because this whole thing falls under Christmas so I'm going to add that there is also um, snowflakes add and I think I have one for snowmen snowmen add and there's a gift box so I think I have one for gifts bows and ribbons add and there's a bird now if I knew what kind of bird this was I could further distinguish I have further distinguished birds but in this case I don't really know or care so I'm just gonna put bird there's also a tree and, and there is a star the sentiments I would probably say would be Christmas related so I wouldn't do anything specific about those you can add the caption here instead of the other place okay and then the last thing to do is assign this to an album which is stamp and basically I would just continue through all the items and continue to catalog them in that way now for things like you see the tinsel glitter here 
when I double click on this one, I don't assign a caption to this because I don't have a specific spot that I need to put it in. But what I will do is in this case, it is the color silver, so I will add that color to it. I will also add that it is tonic, oops, click on that again, that it is tonic studios. And that is glitter, so if we come over here, it is glitter and glitter glue, and we will add that. And that is basically it. Okay, so now you're probably asking, okay, Melanie, you just showed us all of this. What a lot of work. What's the value? Why are you doing this? Okay, so there's a couple of different things. So let's say I'm creating a project, a Christmas card, and I want to see all the stamp sets or dies or anything that I have that is snowman related. So what I can do is I can come in here and under the tags, I can come down to calendar, where is it here? Calendar, under winter, under Christmas, or I can click on snowman. So let's click on snowman. And right away, what you see is every single stamp, these are all stamps, this is a die. This is a Cricut cartridge. This is an embossing folder. So anything that has a snowman in it, I can quickly see exactly what I have. So as I'm scrolling through here, if I decide that, you know what, I just really love this snowman here, I can click on it, click on information, and I can see that if I go to red, R, which is, stands for red, which is my red bin. If I look under D, which is my DVD cases, and look for number 31, that's where this stamp set resides. Okay, so it gives me a, an opportunity to look for something very, very quickly. Okay, so let's say that I don't really care about a stamp set, but I want to see all the punches that I own. So what I can do is I can come over here scroll down, click on punches, and there I will have examples of every single punch that I own. And I can say, oh, you know what? This one here I want to use, and I can see that it is P2-5, which is punches, I have a punch board. It's behind the door in my by my entrance. Row two, and it's number five, and I can find that really quickly. Or let's say that I want to look at whatever stuff that I have assigned to mixed media. So something that I think would work for mixed media. I can click on that and I can see that I have a jelly press, gel press plate, as well as some tools. Now I do still have some things in my craft room that I have not inventory. So that is something that I still need to work on. But you get the idea, right? So this allows me very quickly to find what it is that I need or what it is that I have. Hope that makes sense. I also do sort things by color. So for instance, um, I could say, show me all the ink that I have. So this is all the ink, but let's say I only want to focus on blue. So I could either click on blue or I can scroll down and I could say, show me everything in Broken China. And then there would be the ink pad that I would have under Broken China. Or if I click blue, I can now see every single blue ink pad that I have. Easy peasy, right? And then I know where these are stored so I could find those quite easily. I, I don't really need to, um, index them the same way I do the stamps and dies. Anyways, I hope you found this helpful and um, at the very least interesting or for pure entertainment and that you think I'm absolutely ridiculous for doing all this work. Um, all I know is this works for me. Since I've done this, I've uh, been able to access what I have in a much 
easier and quicker way than what I had previous. Previously, I just would flounder and have to spend hours, not hours, but you know, a long time searching through all my stamps just to find, you know, that one sentiment that I know exists, right? So anyways, thank you so much for joining me. We're going to continue on with this series. I'm not sure what I'm, what I'm going to tackle next, so it's going to be a surprise. And until next time, happy crafting. And if you're joining me, happy reorganizing.